Welcome, everybody, to Freedom Friday. I'm your host, Pastor Brian Holmes with Empowered Christian Ministries. And I'm uh, today we are going to get into the topic of curse breaking. And not only are we going to get into the topic of curse breaking, we're going to actually break some curses today. So buckle up. Let's jump in. Welcome to everyone who is with me live. Happy Friday. And um, yeah, today I almost wanted to wait and do this next next uh, week. And But you know, I was going through last week's episode where I, I went through a hundred plus different ways that people get can get demons everything from the occult to false religion to false beliefs to childhood traumas to to even to seemingly innocent things that we do um, in our sexuality in marriage and and so many other areas and it was thorough um, it was over three hours long I didn't plan for it to take that long but that's what happened so uh, it, it, it's good to have it all in one video and so I promised then that this week we would be doing some curse breaking, and so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, if there's any questions uh, about curse breaking in general that you have uh, before we before we get started, load them up in the chat, and I'll do it first. And we're just going to jump right in, break some curses. I'm going to show you guys how it works. It's it's not rocket science. We are basically just renouncing sin. We're coming into agreement with what God says about uh, what is good and what is evil. We're trusting in God. If if it's something we've done, we're, it's a form of repentance because we're saying, I agree that this is evil and this is bad and I don't want it. I don't want to do it anymore. And I renounce its connection to me. If it's something an ancestor did, we are renouncing the evil that they did and those curses that may have passed down to us. If it is, um, I might actually, I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to keep soul, I think I'm going to keep soul things to a different uh, time where we'll talk about soul ties and what that is and, and how those get broken. Um it's a very similar thing, so I could just add it in here today, but I think just to kind of keep it consolidated, we're going to keep the soul tie stuff to a separate video. We're going to keep um, probably most inner healing type prayers, probably keep that to another video. And today we're going to focus specifically on renouncing evil and sin and breaking the curses connected to it. Now, within that, uh, list there will be certain names and uh, so demon names and things like that false god names false practices that we're also going to renounce because that's we're renouncing evil and so hello <laughs> um, so when yeah so if there's any questions again uh, let me know I'm going to pull from multiple resources um, I actually have a couple in front of me. I have um, my buddy's uh, book called Fight Plan for Every Christian by Dr. Telford Ammons. Um, he's a good friend of mine. And he, um, I'm going to use his book, but he basically even says in his book that he got uh, these concepts. Not He didn't create them. He actually got them from Derek Prince's ministry. Um, who I like, Derek Prince, and so um, I, I really like uh, his book. Um, what's it called? How to be? Uh, they shall they shall expel demons. Um, I have it in our recommended reading uh, list on the website, and so <laughs> yeah. So I'm not worried about uh, that. We're gonna get freedom if we need freedom. So um, I'm responding to people in the chat, which is private for it's private in the in the recording anyway so there is so i'll i'll pull from that resource which is derek prince's ministry um and some of the curse breaking he does which is kind of we might describe it as curse breaking light 
um, it's it doesn't go in very deep, and so we're going to go in deeper. Um, also going to draw from some curse breaking that comes from this book, Curse Breaking by Bob Larson. And um, so we're going to pull uh, a couple of the curses from Curse Breaking Prayers from there as well. And, and then I'm also going to use another resource that I have that is part of our Do What Jesus Did team. Um, and this was written by Tim Williams, who is the California Regional Director at the time that this was created. Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's over, it's over 16 years old now, so I don't know if he's still a part of the team or not. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll use some of those, some of that as well. And I'm not going to read from any of these things word for word. I'm going to do what I always do a lot of the time, which is allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate uh, certain aspects that I think are most important to be focusing on based on who I'm speaking with. And so since this is a broad audience, um, certain things may not apply to you, and that's okay. Um, just renounce it. If it's, if it's evil, if it's sinful, just renounce it. <laughs> We're just going to renounce it. And so we're going to destroy Satan's right to stay in our life because this thing is lingering over us. Because he has a legal right whenever we are not in disagreement about something with him, right? We need to come into disagreement with Satan and we need to come into agreement with God. And so, like I said before, this isn't rocket science. It's simple. We're we're going to uh, say a type of prayer to God, but it's kind of a what what I describe in the Empower Christian Roadmap as sort of a spiritual warfare type prayer, where it's it's kind of half to God and half it's half to God as a form of supplication, which means we're asking God to to answer the prayer to break the actual spiritual curse sort of in the background and and honor our request and then we're all it's also a spiritual warfare type prayer where we're directing it um sort of into the spiritual realm into the ether if you will and we're just declaring to satan i am breaking this you cannot use this against me any longer and so it's not a prayer to Satan, but it is one that the demons hear and often respond to. And so sometimes we can take a person through curse breaking and one-on-one -on -one deliverance. And, and actually, I've done it in group sessions as well. And sometimes people manifest and sometimes people have difficulty saying certain words, certain phrases. And I'm just going to, you know, we just encourage you, push through it anyway. Um, this is, this is your, your day of healing and your day of deliverance. And so if you've never done this before, then this may be the very thing that needs to happen in order for you to be fully set free. If you have done this before, then we're just confirming it and maybe adding words and, and, and curses that you didn't do it last time in, in the previous session. And then if you've, um, Let's say you're not guilty of any of these things. That's okay. We're, there's nothing wrong with saying this is evil and sinful, and I reject it. Right? God is pleased by that by this by this action. This is a God honoring, God glorifying activity. Okay? We're saying, God, you're good. You want me to be good. You're righteous. You want me to be righteous. You're holy. You want me to be holy. I renounce all of this stuff. I, I recognize this stuff is sinful and I reject it. I recognize this stuff is false and I reject it. I recognize these are lies and I reject them. Because a lot of things we say are going to be the names of other religions or you know, different behaviors and practices and, and all kinds of stuff. And so just know that we're just rejecting it all. We're just rejecting it all. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And... Um, there's no harm in doing it, and often it's powerful, and we get amazing results. So I've seen I've seen people go through a, a curse breaking prayer, 
and be healed and delivered of a lot of stuff. In fact, I was just hearing a testimony last night of somebody I took through some curse breaking prayers several weeks ago, and we did it as a group. I didn't even, she didn't manifest. We didn't, you know, it wasn't, it, there was, th there's a time and a place for that. And it's good. We do that as well, where we allow demons to manifest, where we confront them directly, where we do all that. And there's a time and a place for that. But if you could do this simple renunciation and God shows up right where you are, right where you're watching this and honors that request to be free and says, I am going to get the glory. You're not going to give the credit to some deliverance ministry, some deliverance minister. You're not going to give the credit to this thing or that thing. It's just our simple request in faith and our, our willingness to be obedient to what God says is good and reject what he says is evil. And then simple prayer. And God shows up powerfully a lot of the time. So I, if so, just come expectant. Know that this is a powerful thing. Take it seriously. Um, I'm also so he, here's a few here's a few things that need to happen when you're doing curse breaking. Uh, number one, you need to be a Christian. You need to be a Christian. So Jesus said, when an unclean spirit le you know goes out of a person, it roams around in dry places looking for somewhere to rest, and it can't find any rest and it says i know what i'll do i'll go back to the house from which i came and it says it find it it says he said it finds it swept up and put in order um and empty and it says he goes back in and brings in seven more spirits more wicked than himself and so when we remove demons we need to one do it in the name of jesus we need to be a Christian. We need to have the Holy Spirit living in us. And if you've never made that declaration of faith, I would encourage you to pause the video and make that declaration of faith. Put your trust in Jesus. It's, I can do, we could do a longer uh, video, but the short version is this. I believe Jesus, uh, the eternal Son of God. I believe that there's one God, that the eternal Son of God became a man, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, voluntarily went on a cross, died for my sins, rose from the dead three days later, ascended into heaven, and now seated at the right hand of God the Father. I trust in you, Jesus. I believe that you paid for my sins. I receive you as my Savior, and I repent of my sin, and I'm going to uh, trust in you and live in obedience to you as my Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you just, res if you just said that, and I believe that you meant it, then you are a child of God and you've been born of the Holy Spirit. And for the rest of us, we just need to know that uh, deliverance, you know, Jesus said deliverance is the children's bread. The children's bread. Deliverance is for God's children. It's not for the unbelievers. Okay? This is, this is a, a blessing and a privilege and a healing that comes as a result of turning away from our sin to Jesus, who is the way that we get freed and delivered from our sin and the bondage of sin, given the new birth, and then um, empowered, filled with the Holy Spirit to live a sanctified life going forward. So we need Jesus to do this. Um, every curse is broken in Jesus's name. If if you declare as an unbeliever, I break this curse, you have no, you're not breaking anything. Your words are useless. They don't mean anything at all when it comes to curse breaking. Um, and if a Christian says I break the curse, but they don't believe in their heart that it's being broken, then it's not going to break it. You need to confess it with your, just as Romans 10 says, believe in your heart 
and confess with your mouth. Now Romans 10 is talking about salvation, but the same thing applies when we're talking about curse breaking. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that it's being broken. By the way, once it's broken, it's broken. You don't have to break it again next week. You don't have to break it again a year from now. Now, if you want to do this once a year, that's fine. It's sort of like a, a maintenance kind of housekeeping kind of thing, but you're not re-breaking the curses. You're just um, reaffirming that you believe that they've been broken and also that you're still continuing to renounce the sin, which is which is good. We need to do that. We need to remind ourselves that sin is our main enemy. First sin, right? Then, which leads to death, and then Satan and the demons. And that's our main problem because sin is the thing that opens us up to Satan and the demons, and sin is the reason why there is death. Sin is our primary enemy. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, let me see if there's any other any other notes. Um, I'm probably won't get into any specific stuff like Freemasonry or Buddhism or Reiki. Um, I have sort of longer prayers for these kind of things because they get sort of complex. And so I do want to, let me make that point as well really quick. There, you could say, God, please deliver me. And God may answer that prayer. And he knows exactly what you need to be delivered from. Right. And so it's, it's not about a formula. It's about a personal relationship with the living God. So I've seen some people, matter of fact, uh, two people come to mind that I talked with recently. Um, they both were part of the same group curse breaking prayer. One of them um, just in their heart, they said, God, I just want to be free so I can give you my whole life. I surrender the whole thing to you. If you deliver and heal me of everything, then I, then I praise you and I thank you and I'll give you it all. And if you decide not to heal me, of certain things, physical illness, mental illness, those kind of things, that I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to serve you. I'm still going to be obedient. I love you no matter what happens. And then the other person, same same prayer, 100% same prayer. I took them both through the same thing. Um, there was a, group, was a a larger group of people. That person was, felt like, if I don't get healed and delivered, then God doesn't love me. Or, or I need to say different words, or I need a different person who has more anointing to lay hands on me and pray for me, or I need more prayers, like more people doing it, or how do I get what I want? How do I get healed of this? How do I get delivered of this? How do I get my finances fixed up? And that person's still struggling and the other one's radically changed. What's different? What's different? It wasn't the prayer and it wasn't me. The difference is our heart posture. The difference is, do we love the Lord? Do we love God? Right? Do we love God? Do we surrender it all to him? Because he is Lord and God. And we'll do, we know he's right. And so we're going to do it his way. We know his way is better than our way. Right? We trust that. We're we're humble. We're, we're laying our 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 own agenda down and saying, Lord, I just trust you. It's the only difference. Heart posture, beliefs, right? So when you're doing this, it ain't about a formula. You could say, God, heal me and deliver me, and he may do it. Matter of fact, I received a lot of deliverance, and I didn't even know about deliverance. <laughs> Before I got into deliverance ministry, in my youth, I did all kinds of stuff. I mean, you name it. Sexual immorality, fornication, whatever. I mean, theft, drugs, I used a Ouija board, all kinds of garbage. And I never went through deliverance or even curse breaking. I just surrendered my life to the Lord and I soaked his word in my soul and I 
like I got, I showed through my life repentance. You can confess your sin and or reject a curse with your mouth, but if in your life you still keep the sin around you, you didn't repent and you didn't really, nothing matters. It doesn't matter. And if you, in your heart, still love that thing, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> You still love it. You haven't really repented. Repentance means to change your mind and to change your heart. So really, that's that's so important. If you just go through the motion and say the words, but your heart posture isn't right, your mind isn't convinced that I need, I really want to surrender to the Lord. I really want to follow him. I really want to become more like Jesus. I'm laying aside my own agenda. Um, you're, you're going to have that limitation. It's, it's, if God shows up and heals and delivers you, it's by his grace alone. But, but just, but just so you know, he, he shows up more when we come right. <laughs> it's a, it's really about that desperation. So be desperate, be desperate. That's, if you're not desperate yet. Pause the video and and enter into a time of prayer and fasting. Really meditate on what's happening on your life. Really draw close to the Lord and say, Lord, show me the consequences of my own sin. Show me the consequences of my rebellion so that I can see it. Um, so that I can come into agreement and see things the way that you see it. If you do that, it will make all the difference in the world. And so... And then all this other stuff is just, we're just reinforcing it, right? Like like I said, Romans 10, believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth. You can't keep doing the same stuff. You got to fully reject the evil. Anything we, we renounce, if you have any connection to it in your house, because you used to be a part of it and you haven't thrown it away yet, you got to get rid of it. If you're living in sexual immorality, you got to stop doing that. If you haven't repented of the abortion that you had, or if you haven't repent, if you haven't given restitution for the things that you stole, and you have the ability to make those things right with people, right? Get it? You have to show full repentance. That's what the Lord's really looking for. So this this activity, what we're doing is it's powerful, but only because it it takes what God wants us to do and to be which is godly, to be like him, to pursue him, and to want to draw near to him, it sort of takes that and takes it, it sort of makes it official. So with our outward confession, we are sort of renouncing these things and breaking the curses. That's similar to the way that water baptism is an outward expression of the inner faith of our, of our repentance and our trust in Jesus and our decision to follow him. Right, so it's kind of the same thing, and so and if you do it regularly, you know, every year or every six months or however you want to do it, or if you you know if you have an issue and then you you go do curse breaking specific to whatever that's going on there because you think it might be demonic or something, um, then it's it's you're just you're just committing to that process, all right? Um, all right, what else? What else? All right, I think I think I got the bases covered. Okay. So I'm going to spiritually, <laughs> virtually, annoy every single person who watches this video. And um, before I do that, let, I want to do this. Um, let me say this. Sometimes people... Uh, sometimes people will have some type of manifestation. A manifestation just means that the demonic presence that is influencing or affecting you, uh, sometimes it's hiding deep in the background and you didn't even know you had it. Um, and sometimes doing curse breaking actually reveals the stuff, um, sort of flushes it out to, to the surface. Um, so sometimes people manifest. And, um, you know, during a deliverance session, 
sometimes I have people push through it and keep breaking the curses, and other times we just deal with the demon um, and, and interrogate it directly and go after it that way. Um, since this is virtual and I'm not with each of you, I'm going to instead do it. Um, I'm just going to tell you to push through the manifestation as best you can. If you need to, you can pause the video and, and finish it later. Um, but if you're able, you know, if we're going to pray now, Lord, give them the strength and the power to stay fully in control in their right mind and be able to fully renounce every single form of demonic bondage in Jesus name. Hey there, I see I see a few other people have joined. Um the the agenda for today is curse breaking and not just the discussion of curse breaking, we are going to break curses. And so I would recommend rewinding the show if if you tune in later on and uh and watch from the beginning so that way you can jump in and just repeat it because i'm gonna have you guys repeat along with me so that's my my encouragement is um to do that let me let me um i'm actually going to say this in the chat as well um if you're tuning in late start show from the beginning all right <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to leave a, a, a message in the chat in all caps. So hopefully any uh, new people who come in late, because I don't want to have to keep re-explaining this. Uh, if you're turning in, tuning in late, just start over from the beginning um, because we're going to break curses. And I want to make sure if you're breaking them, you have all of the foundation first um, and you're doing it with the right heart posture. So if, if you feel some kind of manifestation, it could be confusion, it could be coughing, it could be... Um, Maybe you feel like you want to throw up or spit up. That's fine. Um, I encourage you to go get a trash can and put it next to where you're watching this. If you're watching this, you know, in a public place or at work or, or you know, something like that, um, or in a living room with other people in the room, I would recommend you go be isolated somewhere where it's comfortable and, and where you can let the happen. Like, we want to let the demons leave. And we want them to be forced out. And so put yourself in a position where, um, what's going on? <laughs> uh, put yourself in a, um, in, a, in a place where that way you're able to do this and just renounce it and, and declare it out loud. You're also going to be declaring these things out loud. So be in, an, in a place where you can declare it out loud. If you're not in the right place, come back. Uh, you know, do it, do it later, do it later. Um, and so, and if you're able to put some power behind it, right? Don't just say, I, I renounce all sexual immorality. Say, I renounce all sexual immorality. Like get your emotions into it, get your body into it, get your mind into it, get your spirit into it, right? The demons can tell when you mean it. And so sometimes they're, and remember, demons are in the soul. They're in the mind, the will, the emotions. So you got to get your mind, will, and emotions in there. Um, and so uh, welcome, guys. Um, just check that note and, um, you know, start at the beginning. And um, so that way you can you can join with us with, with all the right stuff. Um, so, all right. Um, I will pause here and there and give you guys an opportunity to say your own personal additions okay so a few things and i'm gonna i'm gonna give i'm gonna space these out so you guys have the time to do this um the holy spirit will bring thoughts to your mind during this process and all we're doing is renouncing sin and evil and and demonic names and and those kind of things so if we're going through a list and i'm like i you know i renounce lust uh, incubus, uh, adultery. If something pops in your head that says pornography, 
at, you add pornography, right? If because the Holy Spirit knows things about you specifically that I don't know, um, and so let him let him bring things to your mind. You'll know it's a sin. Renounce it. Just you're just adding it to the list, right? And I'm also doing that at the same time. You guys won't even know what stuff I'm reading and what stuff I'm adding supernaturally. We just throw it in there, okay? Um, and then I'm also gonna pause at certain points and and let you guys you know although I'm, I'm going to deal with the soul ties and stuff later so I'm, i might not do that too much so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to anoint you with oil in the bible anointing oil represents the presence of the holy spirit and this is also used in consecration with prayer everything that anointing oil was put on was declared holy so I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to reach through this and touch you in the forehead and anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit and consecrate you and submit you to the Lord Jesus for ministry and healing. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to just start breaking curses. Um, so just repeat after me. First, the simple statement of faith. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you're the Son of God and the only way to God. That you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I now confess to you any sins that you have made me aware of. And now just confess any sins that come to your mind. Say, for all sins committed by my ancestors, I renounce that evil. And then any sins that come to your mind, add them to the list. Say it out loud. Say, Lord, I repent of all sins I've ever committed. I hate them. I turn from them. I turn to you, Lord Jesus, for mercy and forgiveness. I ask forgiveness for the curses of my ancestors on both sides of my family, going all the way back to Adam and Eve and every generation in between. As I speak and declare each confession, I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive me and my ancestors and put all of these sins under the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray you break both I pray you break these curses on both sides of my family, including any ancestors from my current spouse or ex-spouses. And for my children or future children that are not yet of legal age, I break these curses on their behalf. And the children who are already of legal age they have to break them on their own accord. In the name of Jesus, I renounce and break all curses of false religion that are on me and future generations. This renunciation includes, but is not limited to, the following curses. False religion, legalism, 
rejection of God, anger at God, unbelief in God's word as Holy Spirit inspired truth, unbelief in God's power, unbelief that Jesus Christ is God, unbelief in his death and resurrection, unbelief in his finished work at Calvary. Rejection of the Lord's grace. Trying to earn or win God's love. Trying to be good and holy on my own effort. Instead of trusting in Jesus alone. I renounce and repent of all hypocrisy. Religious bondage, lust and ambition for position or for power. I renounce Jezebel and Ahab and every form of false love or false gifts or demonic tongues, false discernment, false wisdom, false prophecy. False dreams and visions. Selfishness and greed. Apathy for the lost. All anti-Semitism and hatred of the Jews or other ethnicities. Anti-Catholicism and anti-Protestantism. Slander, gossip, lying, division, theft, all Native American religions, every ascended master, Baha'ism, Black magic, white magic, Buddhism, Christian science, A Course in Miracles, Mormonism, Joseph Smith, and every one of the false prophets, Hinduism, Shiva, Kali, Vishnu. The entire New Age, Kabbalah, obsession with UFOs, Unitarian Church, Oneness Pentecostalism, Religious Legalism, Scientology, Jehovah's Witnesses, Every form of mind control, demonic yoga. I cut all soul ties with the founders, teachers, and proponents of these religions. And I renounce all demons attached to these religions and their leaders. And I cancel every ritual, every ceremony, and blood covenant associated with these false belief systems. I also renounce the false religions and false religious practices of fill in the blank with those that you were a part of or influenced by. I renounce and break all curses of witchcraft, all evil curses, fetishes, charms, vexes, hexes, spells, jinxes, all psychic powers, sorcery, enchantments, witchcraft, and love spells, 
any person connected with any occult practice or psychic source. Psychic heredity gifts, psychic powers, bondage of physical or mental illness, family and marital rebellion and strife, occult or psychic involvement, divination, Ouija board, charming seances, speaking to the dead, crystal balls, palm reading, astrology, influence of personal birth sign. Familiar spirits, horoscopes, reading coffee grounds or tea leaves, automatic writing or painting, channeling spirits, incantations, Wicca, spell books, worship of Mother Earth or Earth Goddess, spiritism, spiritualism, secret oaths, Demonic role-playing games, vows that I've made or that other my ancestors have made, belief in spirit guides or fairies, every occult or satanic ritual, orgies, temple prostitution, annual sacrifices, animal or human sacrifice, worship of idols, Ceremonies honoring false gods and goddesses, covenants made to them, self mutilation, including anorexia or bulimia, or cutting. Wishcraft, Dungeons and Dragons. Tarot cards, Luciferian, Satanic, and Freemason recurses in every form of secret society bondage. I cut all soul ties with those living and dead who enticed me or my ancestors into these witchcraft indulgences, and I cut off their future access to me through the psychic third eye. I sever it per permanently by the blood of Christ. The opening of any chakras, I close them. All communication by channeling or other objects such as crystals or amulets. Any form of disassociated soul transference. I reject those ungodly souls and their influence. I rebuke and cut off all astral projection, every form of mind control, the manipulation of altars through triggers or any other open door. Every open door via my mind and soul is hereby closed through the blood of Christ and all access is denied from this point forward. Every blood oath broken. I reject Horus, Banshee Spirits, every sealed vow, I renounce every form of destructive emotion, pride, pride of life, arrogance, Cunning, smugness, trickery, intellectual pride, physical pride, spiritual pride. I renounce the spirit of Leviathan, the king of pride, and I remove any crown of pride he placed on me. I ask the Holy Spirit to show me the difference between appropriate self-esteem and the error of false superiority. 
I, re I revoke and denounce all rejection, rejection curses, perceived rejection, rejection in the womb curses, all inner vows and bitter root judgments spoken over me or any of my ancestors. Fear of rejection, rejection of God, anger at God, mental, physical, verbal, or sexual abuse, resentment, bitterness, bitter roots, jealousy, envy, unforgiveness, grief, shame, and false guilt. Fear of rejection, anger at rejection, and shame or hatred because of rejection or abandonment. I renounce all anger and hate, seething anger, rage, fury. I command these spirits to leave me right now in Jesus' name. Hatred of father or mother, spouse or ex-spouse, and all prior sexual, emotional, or soul tie relationships. Of spiritual leaders, of men, of women, of those in authority in the church or in civil government. I ask the Lord to bring healing to those areas of my soul where I have hatred or bitterness. All self-hate, wrath, violence, temper tantrums. Every form of racial hatred, hatred of countries, of political parties, or of ethnic identities. I renounce all hatred towards those who have tormented me, abused me, or treated me harshly. Because the Lord has forgiven me, I can forgive them without endorsing that what they did wasn't evil. I renounce and break all curses related to fear. Fear of death, of darkness, of animals, of water, of sexual assault, or of other things. Fear of the future. I renounce the false fear of hell, fear of God, the Holy Spirit of Jesus, the loss of salvation. I am saved by my trust in the Lord Jesus and what he did on the cross. I will go to heaven. I will have eternal life. And I reject every demonic spirit that tries to oppose that. I renounce the fear of relationships, fear of marriage, fear of spiritual leadership, fear of childbearing. I renounce and break all curses related to nightmares, night terrors, insomnia, agoraphobia, or all other irrational phobias. Fear of the darkness, fear of noises, fearful dreams, superstitions of all kinds, mental imagery, fear of choking, being raped or attacked by gangs. The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power love, and self-control. I renounce all depression, every form of mental illness, hopelessness, worthlessness, a wounded spirit, suicide, self-destruction, self-harm, schizophrenia, paranoia, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, lunacy, insanity, Addictions to alcohol as a response to depression or trauma. And every other response, including gambling, drugs, and pornography. All anxiety disorders. Dementia, neurological damage, seizures, convulsions, all hormonal and chemical imbalances. I renounce and break all curses of isolation. 
unnatural grief, loneliness, religious justifications for emotional separation, a relationally dysfunctional lifestyle, idleness and sloth, lack of Christian community, of fellowship, lack of friends, of mentors, and of accountability. I renounce every demonic force with an assignment from Satan to keep me to himself and away from the Lord and from family and from caring spiritual leaders. I renounce every spirit spouse. I renounce incubus. I renounce succubus. I renounce Jezebel. They need to leave my life right now in Jesus' name. I renounce all self-hatred. I don't hate myself. I love myself because the, the Lord loves me, because the Father loves me. I'm part of his family. I renounce condemning thoughts, attacking my appearance, my intellectual skills, or my emotional capacities, and my relationship with God. I renounce the voice telling me I'm no good, or that I deserve death, or that I deserve hell, or that I should give up and take my own life, because I have no reason to live. I belong to the Lord. I have meaning and purpose in my life. I'm storing up treasures in heaven. God has a plan for my life. I renounce sudden death, suicide, or running away, or unhealthy delusions and fantasies of the mind. I renounce all death and destruction. I ask for forgiveness for, this, for my sins and the sins of my ancestors. Every blood oath or vow, every blood covenant made with sex partners outside of marriage. I revoke, denounce, cancel, and nullify any death wish for myself or for others. Illegitimacy, having children outside of wedlock, involvement in the occult, scheming to murder, poison, infanticide, abortion, killing of family members, miscarriage, birth control that destroys fertilized eggs, adultery, ceremonial or ritualistic sacrifice. I nullify and I renounce all death spirits that have come into my family line. Death of my personhood, my body, my career, my creativity, my relationships, my spiritual life, my joy, my freedom, my marriage, my future, my purpose, my prosperity, my vision, my goals, the desires of my heart. I repent and break all curses of false martyrdom in dead works. I shall live in the fullness of the plans and purposes that God has for my life. I break every death wish, oath, or curse off of me, my family, and all future generations in the name of Jesus Christ. Every witchcraft or demonic assignment against us, I break right now in Jesus' name. All destruction, Abaddon, Apollyon, Asmodeus, vandalism, malice, destruction, graffiti, pillage, and looting, arson, destruction of property, all murder, revenge, retaliation. Suicide attempts, suicidal thoughts, Moloch, child sacrifice, fratricide, ritual murder, and gang murder. I denounce every form of occultism, including jewelry, books, figurines, inanimate objects, artwork.
superstitions, crystals, feng shui. And I ask the Lord to bring to my mind anything still in my house that is an open door to the demons so that I can destroy it. I break the curse of lust. I ask the Lord to sever every soul tie, every ungodly soul tie that that is connected to me. I ask that the Lord would take those parts out of me and send them back to where they belong and bring the parts of me out of that, out of those people, sanctify and purify them and restore them back to me in health and wholeness. I denounce any spirits connected to these things. They need to leave right now in Jesus' name. I renounce and break the curses of adultery, separation, divorce, infidelity, immorality, failed marriages, incest, molestation, rape, all sex spirits entered through the eyes, ears, or any other orifice by participation, transfer, or inheritance. I cut those off and I seal those doors by the blood of Christ. Every sinful imagination and flashback, tormenting dreams, I renounce all pornography, all fornication and sex out of marriage. Prostitution, compulsive masturbation, pornographic movies, television, magazines, videos or internet. All involvement with prostitution. Guilt, shame homosexuality, lesbianism, transvestism, sex perversion of every kind, bestiality, sodomy, masochism, sadism, sadomasochism, occult sex, harlotry, whoredom, uncleanness, defilement, filthy dreams, conversations, filthy imaginations and flashbacks and fantasies, impotence, Frigidity, sterility, cruelty. I renounce incubus and succubus. They need to leave right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit spouse, I declare a divorce right now in Jesus' name. All forms of bloodlust, nudity, lasciviousness, ungodly flirtation, promiscuity, Lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Lust for power, position, wealth, fame, or money. Come out right now every unclean spirit of all sex organs. The lips, the tongue, the taste buds, the throat, the mind, every bodily orifice. Out of the nose, ears, eyes. Dreams, visualizations, or any other demonic sexual stimulation. I renounce and break all curses related to illicit relationships before or after marriage, and I cut all soul ties associated with such relationships. I renounce all false attempts at purity and self isolation through weight gain, unkept appearance, anorexia or bulimia, or other offensive behavior. I renounce every form of ungodly rebellion, anarchism, nihilism, violent civil disobedience, spiritual rebellion, against pastors or spiritual elders, rebellion against parents, rebellions against, rebellion against lawful government,
I renounce and break all curses related to my emotions, being unteachable, defensive, argumentative, subversive, manipulative, controlling, or demanding, and all false attempts that are a pretense of submission, coercion, or setting my own agenda that are in conflict with the good of all people. I rebuke the demons of war, violence, Antichrist, Abaddon, and Nike. I renounce all ungodly pastimes, excessive gambling, alcoholism, demonic entertainment, hedonistic lifestyles, profane music, or entertainment TV. Tattoos, body piercing, drunkenness, revelry, and other unwholesome activities, vulgar concerts, pagan rituals, demonic ceremonies, blasphemous or sacrilegious indulgence. I renounce all loneliness. I repent for the love of money and for greed, covetousness, theft, stealing, or using unjust scales and balances. And I break all curses associated with these. I renounce the spirit of poverty, of lack, of failure to pay tithes or to be generous and to honor God with my finances. I resist every spirit of poverty and lack and demonic withholding of my finances, and I demand a sevenfold return according to the law of restitution in Proverbs 6.31. I renounce the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab and every other form, including murder, control, false submission, manipulation, arrogance, false spirituality. Queen of Heaven. I renounce all Jezebel Ahab involvement in every one of my relationships. I renounce all sexual seduction. Inciting spiritual failure or church schisms. Questioning biblical authority. Fostering witchcraft and rebellion. I renounce Lilith, Venus, Ishtar, Astarte, Aphrodite, Baal, murder, and Lucifer. I renounce and sever every soul tie with these false gods and false goddesses. And every sexual, emotional, or spiritual bond I've forged with any person controlled by Jezebel. In judgment, I release the dogs of Jezreel to spiritually eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jezebel to drive this demonic influence completely out of my life. I also renounce Nimrod, passivity, misogyny, masculine spirits, every form of gender dysmorphia, Every false gender construct besides male born a male and female born a female. I renounce every form of false, re of false marriage other than one man and one woman for life as God declared. I renounce every ungodly addiction, gluttony, overeating, bulimia, anorexia, nervosa, binging, purging, addiction and craving for food, sweets and fat, all bondage to alcohol, and I denounce the alcoholic syndrome and renounce this as my identity. 
I am not an alcoholic. I'm a child of God. And I ask the Lord to bring healing of this addiction and to deliver me from the spirits connected to it. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I renounce all illegal or harmful drugs. Every form of insobriety. Psychotropic drugs, morphine, crack, Ritalin, designer drugs, nicotine and caffeine, marijuana, opium, PCP, cocaine, LSD, hallucinogenics, heroin, speed, and every other thing that keeps me in bondage and unable to give the Lord all my heart and all my mind and all my strength. Every form of the new age including yoga, tantric yoga, transcendental meditation, demonic martial arts, clairvoyance, precognition, voodoo, hoodoo, guided imagery, holistic health practices, reiki, psychic healing, eastern meditation, healing magnetism, clairaudience, mental telepathy, mantras, and other demonic chants. I Ching, parapsychology, re interpreting and reading auras, mental telepathy, numerology, spirit guides, astral projection, astral travel, ESP, past life therapy, anything affecting electro or mechanical mechanical malfunctions, biofeedback, biorhythms, pyrokinesis, tai chi, kundalini, serpent spirit, prana, chi, buddha, the prince of the power of the air. Demonic acupuncture. And acupressure. Any generational curses connected to my nationality and ethnicity. Any form of prejudice, superiority, inferiority, every form uh, I think I did mental illness already. Every form of anxiety, schizophrenia, delusions. Forgetfulness, Alzheimer's, dementia, mental defects or damage, obsessive compulsive disorder, lunacy, insanity, every form of blasphemy against God, mute spirit, perversity, complaining, critical spirit. Pessimism, ingratitude. I renounce every form of physical infirmity. Mm. Uh, and all mental infirmity, including... Narcissism, PTSD, autism, attention deficit disorder, and all age-related attacks on my mind. 
including mental distraction. I ask the Lord to bring healing to every mental health issue and restoration of my body to health and wholeness. I renounce all physical infirmities, including every genetic and congenital disease, fibromyalgia, cancer, arthritis, gastrointestinal diseases, high blood pressure, diseases of joints, extremities, skeletal and musculoskeletal diseases, lymphatic and endocrine systems, disabilities, abnormal conditions, infections, nutritional deficiencies, internal toxicities, sickle cell anemia, Lou Gehrig's disease, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, motor neuron disease, AIDS, stroke, paralysis, deaf and dumb, mute, baldness, and chronic diseases. Every unhealthy factor, pathogenic, parasitic, poisonous, environmental, or caused by microorganisms, viruses, and genetic mutations. I break every curse intended to affect my overall health to cause premature death or result in suffering, pain, heightened vulnerability to disease, or to cause bodily malfunctions, to bring about wasting or the fear of death or dying. Every bone or joint disease, every malfunctioning organ, cirrhosis of the liver, edema, itching, slip discs, vertigo, troubles to the related to the ears and hearing, kidney infection, epilepsy, coma, hepatitis, fungus, moles, warts, acne, psoriasis, crippling pneumonia, all swelling, everything that causes pain in the body. I denounce the following spirits, Lymphlupi, Ludiki, Erustuf, Kagumesa, Babanao, Herbalion, Phenobalon, Eel Spirit, Aranoid, Shablin. I command them to leave right now in Jesus' name. I, I ask the Lord to bring healing to every physical abnormality or dysfunction in the restoration of my body to health and wholeness. I renounce every single attack on every one of my organs, causing any other dysfunction in my body. I break the curse of illegitimacy once again. And I ask for forgiveness on behalf of myself and my ancestors. I ask that all of these curses would be broken off of myself and all future generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that these curses have been broken. All the way back to Adam and Eve. And from the action of every generation in between. And all future generations. As these curses have been broken. And I've renounced every one of these abominations and sins. 
I have confidence that I am once again accepted into complete fellowship with God. And I need no longer to feel ashamed to enter into his presence. I ask the Holy Spirit to come into every one of the vacant places that an unclean spirit has left, that an unclean infirmity or brokenness has left. Holy Spirit, come into every single one of these places. Holy Spirit, have your way. I anoint each person in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are your temple, Lord. Come into them. Fill them from the top of the head to the soles of their feet. Every area of their mind, their body, their emotions, their spirit. Leave no room untouched. Vacate every ungodly demonic presence, Lord. For your glory, purify your bride, Lord. Purify your bride that she would be pure and holy and undefiled and blameless, awaiting the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and consume your people. If they have not yet, may they be baptized in your spirit. Fill them to the full. Give them every good gift. May the fruit of your presence flourish in their heart and in their mind and in their body. Consecrate them today, Lord. Make them holy. Put a hedge of protection around every single one of them. That they would know you and be known by you. Walk in victory. Walk in freedom and healing and deliverance. And be a light to the world. For your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. How you doing in there? <laughs> I know some of you uh, probably started over or um, are leaving and coming back. And so that's okay. Leave a comment. Send us an email. Let us know how things are going. Um, if, if, something, if something powerful happened, definitely, definitely let us know. Let us know. Let us know. So that way we may... You know, it becomes a part of your public testimony as you share it. And then if we get to share it with others, it's we get to share in your testimony and be a part of it as well. And the Lord is glorified in that. He is, um, he wants to receive the credit for doing these things. Matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't get set free from sometimes our prayers because you go and you're praying for somebody. Right, like from a distance, like let's say your unsaved family member or something, you pray for them to get healing, and maybe they get healed, but it happens not in a distinctly supernatural way. It, you know, at the end of the day, who gets the glory? If the doctor gets the glory, if the medical establishment gets the glory, if if the person feels like they just got over it in their own strength, then they get the glory. But when we lay hands on people, as the scripture tells us to, and also a lot of scriptures say anoint with oil and lay hands on one another, that the elders of the church could pray over one another, right? The prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. When we do these things, when we are faithful to what God wants us to be faithful, when we are obedient to what God wants us to be obedient to, then we ask God to heal, and when he brings the healing, there's no question about who did it and why he did it. He's like, you did it the way I told you to do it. You showed your trust in me. You're faithful. You're obedient. You're connected with my church. 
you're doing things, you're submission, you know, you're submitting to the authorities that I've put in place around you. Right? He gets all the glory and it builds us up and makes us more like Jesus in the process. And so um that's why this curse breaking stuff works, especially when you come at it with the right heart posture first. Because when you get set free, especially in a cool way like this, where there's not even people involved, but it was still connected through the church. It was virtual, but it was still, you know, we're virtually still following all the same steps, right? I'm still a pastor and elder on behalf of you in this moment. Um, and so I'm still praying. I'm virtually doing oil. I'm you know, to the best of my ability, I'm holy and righteous. And, you know, so therefore my prayers are powerful and effective as should yours be, because you should also be holy and righteous. And so, um, so Sarah has testimony. She says she realized she doesn't get confusion in her thoughts. It left a while ago, but she's not sure when. <laughs> so it didn't just happen tonight, though. <laughs> but yes, so, uh, you know, yes, the Lord gets glory when we realize we had some transformation and we praise him and we thank him for that. Um, so in uh, a little while ago, Brian um, in the chat said, I guess he's in, what are you, in China or, or Barbados? Um, but... He mentioned both. We need Holy Spirit change in Barbados. Yeah. So, yeah, Lord, we, we lift him up. We pray for revival throughout Barbados and in China and throughout the entire world. Lord, come um, to everyone's, uh, come to them individually, come to their marriages, come to their homes, come to their churches, come to their cities, and come to their countries. We ask for total revival that all the dead things would be brought back to life, that everything sinful would be brought back, um, would be brought through repentance and then back into restoration with you, Lord God, so that everything would be within your kingdom and give you glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so the confusion didn't leave tonight. You just noticed that you haven't struggled with it for some time now yeah see that a lot of times we don't even realize we have uh, deliverance until hindsight you know kind of like my testimony earlier i'm like i started learning about spiritual warfare and deliverance and and started walking in all this stuff and that was i mean gosh i've been doing it since 2015 so a oh, while wow. was that seven eight years now and so there yeah and i look back and go wow i didn't have to do any of these things when did that happen <laughs> like lord you set me free of all this stuff now i mean <laughs> excuse me i did go through curse breaking many times and i did you know i mean i i shared at one point you know i had one kind of uh deliverance thing that happened where um actually i don't know if i've shared that testimony on here i've shared it i've shared it with people before um, maybe I'll talk about that another time, but it's, yeah, I had one thing that it was kind of like I'm 95% sure I casted a demon out of myself, but it was, there's like that 5%, like, did that really happen? <laughs> it wasn't like an external thing where other people confirmed it, like, and nothing spoke through me or anything like that. And so it was, uh, um, and it didn't even have like real symptoms. It was like a physical infirmity um, related thing. And so. Uh, it was a little harder to detect, so I don't have the 100% confirmation. But I definitely did an internal self-deliverance prayer rebuking, and I felt like I was struggling with something, and it was it was related to like allergies, and so, and I literally felt my face contorting and stuff, and I felt like I was fighting something. So I'm like 95% sure that I was doing self-deliverance, but but I mean I should have had so many more demons based on my past, and so there yeah it's the lord does when when we chase after him and and submit and surrender and repent and try to be holy like he brings deliverance and so there's so many different ways for us to be set free um you know don't put god in a box and say he has to do it the way that you like to do it or the way that your church does it or whatever um you know just 
just pursue him and and you know, remain humble and and learn from other people it's one of the ways we support one another in the church right it's not a not everything is a mouth, not everything is a hand, not everything is a foot. We're different members of the body. We see things differently. We have different spiritual gifts, different experiences, different callings. Um, be open to it and and have a relationship with God. And you'll know when people are being led by the Holy Spirit and when they're being deceived and led by something else. So, amen. Jesus sets us free. Um, if you, Does anybody have any questions about... How about the curse breaking process we just went through or curses in general um, related to anything we just talked about? Load them up. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna we are gonna call it a day. I'm gonna not do a five hour session today <laughs> like some of these other shows. I think that's why like the the audio and video syncing issues are happening because I don't have the high tech equipment over here to it, it's like getting overwhelmed. It's like, how long are these videos you're trying to record? Um, so any questions at all, guys, load them up. <clears throat> I will, yeah, and so again, a lot of the stuff I just read came out of Bob Larson's Curse Breaking book. It is, you know, 200 something pages, I think gives you all of the biblical exposition it, you know that walks you through why you know it shows how this is biblical it shows why we're doing it this way it shows that curses can be in perpetuity right because sometimes people say um that uh you know in in Deut I think it was uh, Leviticus or Deuteronomy, like God is saying, like the, you know the consequences will be passed to the third and fourth generation, and so people are like, well, I you know I think it can happen three and four generations back, but not all the way back to Adam and Eve, and um, you know, and so there's different, and and that's something I could explain. Um, I might have already covered that at one point, but we, if if you're not sure, we can talk about all those things. But basically they can go back further than that and there's a good biblical reason to believe that and so um but if you want all of like all the meat of like why and how and all that stuff then definitely check out that book it's a great resource um and uh and he's got a bunch of other curse breaking prayers in the back i didn't even do half of them um probably a third maybe but um because i kind of bounced around between different things but yeah, so definitely, I used a, I used a, a good number of the stuff there, and and even a lot of that profile. So I definitely want to, you know, bless his ministry, and it, he did all the work. I'm just just trying to steward it and bless you guys. Um, I see a question that came above. I don't, I don't see it. You said I asked a question above. I don't see a question above. Um, can you repost it? Sorry, I don't see it. Yeah, I, I never saw that one. I see it now. So the question is, if the Ritalin medication was demonic, um, we, and we talked about uh, medications uh, in the one, I believe in the one uh, Freedom Friday where I talked about mental illness and uh, medication, pharmaceutical drugs, all that kind of stuff. Basically, I my personal position is that, um, well, let, let me put it this way. I've been doing this for almost eight years and... I've never had a demon um, say that it's legal right was a pharmaceutical drug. So that should say something. Um, you can ask, you know, Reverend Larson or other people who've maybe done tens of thousands of these things and see what they say. Maybe they maybe they have encountered that. But so it I mean that's not to say it couldn't be a connection, but I 
most people who are on these things are using it like a medicine. Whereas if you were to ask me about marijuana or any other drug or any of the ones that are optional, like they're, they're, let's say if you had marijuana and you're like, but I'm using it for anxiety, I'm using it for something else. So I'm treating it, I'm using it for medicinal reasons, but you're not doing the CBD version of it. You're doing the version that gets you high and, and you know, um, then I've seen connections to that stuff to any of those kind of things, even, you know, prescription stuff, because you're getting, you're, you're maintaining your lack of sobriety, you're pursuing it, it's meeting other needs and stuff. And so, um, but the reason it's included in that list, you know, so maybe they found something I haven't found. So, you know, I, when in doubt, pray about it and, and ask, but I, so I wouldn't say it's all, I wouldn't say any of the drugs are always demonic. Um, if anything, I would say, I would ask the question, is, is my, is the thing I'm taking this medication for, is it also showing other symptoms of demonization, right? Or is it just, like if you just had a little bit of confusion or a little bit of ADD or something, um, does it have other symptoms, right? Demons don't come and do one little small thing and be okay with that, like, they're still kill, you know, they're stealing, killing and destroying and they're, and they're, yeah, so that they're going deeper usually and extensively and pervasively. So is there other things connected? And if there is, then the medication could be suppressing some of the symptoms so that you're not dealing with the root cause of the problem. So if what is causing your lack of focus is demonic in its root, like the reason you're being distracted, the reason you have confusion, the reason that you're, um, you know, all over the place or not able to focus and those kind of things. If that, if the reason behind that is a demon, then um, Ritalin would be masking it and you're not going to get rid of the demon and the demon is doing other problems besides that. And so the Ritalin is, so I would look for things like that where the medicine is not itself demonic, but it could be masking the demonic. And also um, there could be, you know, there could, you might be taking medication for something, but maybe the Lord would heal that thing. So when we renounced Ritalin and stuff earlier, to say, as well as ADD and ADHD and all those other kind of things, we are, we're not renouncing it because it's a sin. We're renouncing it because it's a brokenness caused by sin. And we're asking God to heal it. We're asking God to heal it. We're asking any demons connected to it, either causing it or making it worse for those to be cast out. Right. So that's what we're that's what we're doing when we're renouncing that thing um, or breaking the curse connected to it. <clears throat> uh, let me see if there's anything else related to this that I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then I would just say, like, can you be sober minded on it as well? So if, if not, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can be on Ritalin, but, um, it's, it's generally advisable if you're able to, to wean yourself off of it as long as you're able to, right? I don't want you to be, you know, we talked about this the other day, certain medicines are helpful. They're, they're, they're healing, they're restorative. And so we wouldn't want to like look a gift horse in the mouth and be like, oh, I don't want that because somebody else made it and it's not natural. It's like, well that's okay you know that's 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 foolish thinking instead of thinking with wisdom and so um yeah so i i don't think so and if uh yeah and if he's not if he's not um on it anymore then praise god you know especially if there's none of the symptoms like so it seems like god has healed it or he or it was just a phase or something you know a season um and so yeah. 
All right. Um, I think that's going to be it, guys. So, um, happy July 4th if you are in America, where we celebrate our freedom and our independence from Great Britain. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's there's something so powerful about um, celebrating our freedom, right? So maybe it was, I am just now piecing it together, but God in his providence is after we just spent an hour and a half talking about freedom and then not just talking about it, but actually going after freedom and asking for it and then asking the Lord to bring freedom and then also commanding the enemy to leave so that we can walk in the fullness of our freedom. Monday is july 4th which is when america celebrates our freedom and our independence and our liberty and a lot of so not only did we become a country through that liberty and that freedom but it's built into our constitution that individuals have this liberty and this freedom as well and so the only time that we are not able to exercise our liberty and our freedom is when what we're doing is harming other people Right. And so that's such a beautiful thing. And really, God, you know, that's part of God's order. He wants he gave us all free will. Now, it doesn't mean there's not consequences of our actions that we do with our free will, but he wants us to have the free will. He wants us to have that. He wants us to do good, not and, and avoid evil, not because he's forcing us to like at gunpoint where we don't have a choice. He's sort of allowing us to live in the consequences of the wrong thing to help us realize that we want the blessings of the right thing, which is why doing curse breaking this way is so powerful because we are, we're reminding ourselves, look, all the stuff that we listed that wasn't really actually the fact that we have to deal with demons as all at all is a consequence of the fall, right? We wouldn't have to deal with no demons if we weren't a fallen beings you know if we weren't fallen living in a fallen nature and so that's part of the fall there they exist here because they fell right because they sinned as well and then all the health issues the mental health the physical infirmities the you know broken relationships and all these other things like a ha half of the stuff we listed wasn't a sin or a demon name, but it was just like some kind of brokenness. And that only happens because of the fall. And God has created this world where we get to live in the consequences of, now we don't experience the fullness of the consequences. That's not until hell for those who get hell. Um, but we get to experience many of the consequences of sin in order to use our free will our the freedom and liberty that we have as humans to desire that which is good to desire god and to pursue him and when we do that then we get the blessings and we get freed of a lot of these curses not all of them right there's still death right we still we're still all going to die but not eternal death um, but many of us will die still, and, and we're getting older, so that's death. But many of them we get healed from. Many of us, you know, it could be so much worse. And so um, last question on this topic of freedom, is it wrong to pledge our allegiance to America? Um, it's, it's not wrong to be patriotic for your country it would be wrong to have um an ungodly uh sense of patriotism right if you have if you're pursuing a colonialism then that would be ungodly if you are trying to conquer through war or other means, other countries and dominate them against their will, that would be ungodly. Um, or to support 
our country doing that would be ungodly, right? America is not doing that. We're not taking over other countries, even though we have the power and, and ability to do that and have for a long time. But we're not doing that because it goes against our values of liberty. Um, in fact, we want them to be free. Um, we want to support other countries to be free. So um, if our country was doing anything um, ungodly and our patriotism led us to uh, be uh, to have allegiance with the country over God's kingdom, then that would be wrong, right? If our country says, you know, we want to do this and that, and God says that is ungodly, then for us to do it anyway, just because we're patriot, you know, we're, we're patriotic and we're kind of going along with our political party, either either side, any party that wanted to do something that goes against God's will and God's um, plan, that would then be ungodly. And so that would be wrong and we shouldn't do that. So when in doubt, we have to remember first and foremost, we're a citizen of heaven. We're a citizen in God's kingdom. And any allegiance we have to our country comes second to that. And so I think as long as we keep that um, in, you know, because ultimately America and every other kingdom of the world, right? Israel, you name it, they're all being, in, they're all under the influence of Satan in many ways. The kingdoms of this world are under the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan. Right, they are all being influenced. Satan has his fingerprints all over every single government in the world, every every country in the world. And so, if we were to be 100% in support of our country, we are aligning ourselves with God's will or with uh, with Satan's plan. And so, we just need to remember that and and just have that discernment, right? Um, like last week, we had Roe versus Wade was overturned, and now abortion will happen uh, less in America, but for nearly 50 years, it was legal at the federal level. And it was wrong the whole time, and it was ungodly the whole time, and it worshipped Satan and Moloch and Baal and these other false gods the whole time. And it was a form of child sacrifice, and it was wicked and ungodly, and, and our country was under a curse because of it. And still is, as long as it's still happening. If we have innocent blood being shed at all, there's consequences. That being said, our country still has good elements in it, and we can celebrate those good things as well. Um, yeah, get out of here. We're going to ban this guy. Um, <clears throat> So somebody came on here and started saying, Hail Satan, and they were just deleted and put in timeout. <laughs> so get behind us, Satan. Um, you have no part in this ministry or in these people. Yeah, I know you didn't see any because I deleted it quick. <laughs> um, and... I'm not even going to say, I was going to say the guy's name, but uh, I'm just going to put hide user on this channel. So there we go. So now he's blocked from the channel. So, but yep. Um, so that's it. That's it for Friday. Um, go and have an amazing rest of your weekend. Have an awesome 4th of July if you live in America. And um, I just pray that the Lord's blessings would be on every single person who goes through this process. And I pray for total healing, total deliverance, total freedom for every single person who um, went through these prayers and, and who, who is um, surrendering their life to the Lord and asking for healing and deliverance. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around every single one of them. And I pray that you would continue to sanctify them and grow them. And um, all right, guys, um, if you're not already, become a member. Go to empowered365.net. 
join the membership program, get involved in uh, on whatever le level you're able to. And um, pretty soon, hopefully next month, we'll start having uh, monthly conferences for everybody at the mobilization level. And so I think those will be powerful and um, will help you guys grow in your individual ministries so that you can start to take those steps to advance the kingdom of God in the way that the Lord has called you to. And we can come alongside you and partner with you and help you uh, do that. So, all right. God bless you. Go and have an amazing rest of your weekend. In Jesus' name, amen.